In my city of Toronto, in fact in the whole country of Canada, it's the end of the school year today. Kids are pouring out into the schoolyard and onto the streets with peals of jubilant laughter as they come to the end of the school term. And it's terribly, terribly difficult to juxtapose the privilege of so many kids in Canada with that annihilating, that appalling photograph of the father and his 23-month-old young daughter lying on the banks of the Rio Grande as they tried to get into the United States, or the photograph of the three little morsels of children and their mother who died in the desert similarly trying to reach the United States. You have to hearken back, don't you, to the uh, photograph of Alan Kurdi. You remember that little three-year-old boy who died in the Mediterranean and whose picture uh, was taken on the on the banks, on the shores of the of the Mediterranean. And since that time, which was four years ago, believe it or not, many of the policies around immigration and refugees for a number of European countries have become even fiercer than they were at the time. And then, of course, you look at the, at the incarceration areas, uh, the, the camps that have been set up from Florida to Texas, allegedly to look after all of these kids, and the abominable conditions in which the children lived. We now know these, these little infants and toddlers and young children guarded by men with rifles. Men with rifles. How will those kids' psyches ever come together again, not to mention being yanked out of the bosom of their families? It's as though the evil underbelly of the United States was exposed that all of those people who voted for Trump without a moral compass. But then again, you have to remember the kids who died on the long trek from Myanmar to Bangladesh of the Rohingya refugees, or the tens of thousands of children who have died in the war in Yemen, or the thousands of kids in hospitals and clinics and schools who were bombed to death in Syria. As a matter of fact, even in the last few days, we now learn about the hundreds of children in a remote community in Pakistan who are now HIV positive because a negligent doctor and negligent local public health officials paid no attention to dirty syringes and dirty needles. You know, it was that, that, that philosopher Francis Fukuyama who talked about the end of history. He meant the Cold War. I feel sometimes as though it's the end of history for our embrace and cherishing of children. In fact, the only ray of light in the last couple of days has been a meeting by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime to discuss the rehabilitation and reintegration of children who've been trapped into roles in extremist forces and terrorist groups and child soldiers, treating these kids with compassion and, and respect as, as victims rather than terrorists. At least it's a ray of light of hope for, for children. While I'm taping this commentary, of course, the G20 is meeting in Japan, the 20 strongest economies in the world, and they will discuss trade, and they will discuss appeasing China, and they will discuss nuclear weapons for Iran and North Korea, and they will discuss climate. But what they won't discuss is children. And with the exception of the United States, every one of those countries has ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child. No wonder people are cynical about the implementation of those human rights conventions. That was last week. I'll be away next week on vacation. I'll be back the week after. I'm Stephen Lewis.